Hey, what's popping everyone? So you've read the title of the video, and yes, it's true. I want to give up on Disney, or I'm giving up on Disney, or whatever I decide to call it. I haven't figured it out yet. Well, Sam, what does this mean? What, what, what are you saying about this? What do you mean? Well, I'll tell you, loyal fan base. Been no secret, Disney has been losing what is usually been a super loyal and enormous fan base. To put it bluntly, there's been pumping out a bunch of mid, bro. If it's not mid, that they're just downright awful. And my one of my favorite gems is, is this one right here. Here's the thing, Bruce. I'm great at controlling my anger. Mm. I do it all the time. When I'm catcalled in the street, when incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me, I do it pretty much every day because if I don't, I will get called emotional or difficult or might just literally get murdered. I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. So it looks like I got some beef to squash here. Let's start with Pixar. As they are probably the most recent example, they just released Elemental. I haven't seen it yet at the time of this recording, okay? Just keep that in mind. Pixar was once seen as the king of the animation space. They had all-time classics, that's, and they took home so many awards, they seemed untouchable. Untouchable, I promise, dude. They kept up with this pattern until around 2011, in my opinion, because they released Cars 2. Now, this is their first flop, okay? Cars 2 is not a good movie, you understand? I know there's some people who are listening to this that I know that are going to defend Cars 2, but I firmly believe this is hot garbage. And ever since they released Cars 2, they've been pumping out some films that are a little bit more hit or miss with some audiences that it had its fan base, but it was kind of mixed between its viewers like Brave, M.U., Finding Dory. They have lots of divisive fan bases about those projects. The once guaranteed Pixar banger became a little bit more scarce. For example, the last movie that I think I really enjoyed to come out of Pixar was Soul, and that's three years ago. That's not that bad, that's not that bad. I did like Soul, it's a pretty good movie. Now the last one that I think that I loved, and almost everybody did too, like an almost unanimously loved, Pixar movie was Coco. Now that's six years. That's a, that's a little bit more of a jump. Star releasing movies that aren't necessarily bad except Lightyear, with many mixed reviews from fans. Examples being Elemental so far, Luca, and Turning Red. Turning Red probably being the most controversial one since the panda is a metaphor for a woman's monthly in the stages of puberty, but you know. There are some fans and like people that I know, like relatives, like went to theaters to see this or they watched it on- actually it wasn't even in theaters, that's one of the main problems. It wasn't even in theaters, it went straight to Disney+, Plus, which is completely Disney's fault, not Pixar's, because they did that to Pixar for like three straight movies. It's totally not fair. But yeah, there, I had relatives or friends or whatever that go to watch Turning Red and they felt kind of uncomfortable, a little bit off-putting. But my girlfriend loved it, so I'm gonna take her side. Love you. Even though. You know, Pixar is not a saving grace. You know, I still have- OH GOSH DANG IT! I don't think it's really necessarily trendy to say this, but uh, being a Star Wars fan is hard. If you are a fan of something that most of what they push out is garbage, that that's pain. And that's what it's like being a Star Wars fan. The amount of hot garbage in mid to come out of the Star Wars factory is absurd. If I've learned anything about Star Wars, is that if it, a movie franchise, like its arc trilogies, I mean, if they go on for long enough or if a show that they have goes on for long enough, nine times out of ten, it's gonna end poorly. Except for Clone Wars, that was awesome. I loved The Mandalorian. I would have said that it was one of my favorite shows while the first two seasons were airing in On the Run. Season two ended and I was like, wow, what a good ending. But then the spin-off and the third season came out that weren't needed. Oh, it's really, it's really frustrating. And then season three came out and that was like my last hope. I was like, okay, Star Wars, you've, you've done me wrong before, but you have the third season of Mando now, so I gotta do this. And it's all girl power and mom bait. Like, where's my space Western, Disney? They've been on a run of making stoic cool guys that never talk, that have a cool suit, 
always take off their helmet and say the worst and corny things and also need women to come and save them because they're too helpless on their own even though they were just like super sick earlier. I know you could I know you could do it, Pedro. I watched The Last of Us. I saw that ending scene. You know, you know, that's okay though. That 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 that's okay. I, I may no longer have Pixar or Star Wars, but you know, at the very least I still have Oh my gosh. Oh my Goodness gracious, mamma mia. Marvel has become even more hit or miss than Pixar has been in the past few years. It's driving me nuts. I thought that after Endgame, I was like, okay guys, this is, the year, this is Marvel's time now. This is their time to rebuild, build an even more epic story than before. Is They're gonna take a step back. They're gonna do great. It's gonna be awesome. And I was like, okay, since Endgame, Movies-wise, we're not talking about shows right now, just movies-wise. They've released Shang-Chi, No Way Home, Guardians 3, that's about it. That's the only three good movies to come out in the past four years, five years? That That's ridiculous, you can't do that. Again, it used to be the guarantee, you know? Not as much as a guarantee as Pixar was, but it was it was still like, you're gonna walk into that theater and you're gonna see something awesome. I mean, other than those three that I mentioned, you could take or leave, honestly. Their quantity over quality method is backfiring on them so hard and alienating a bunch of fans. The majority consensus is that they are more focused on trying to be woke, than a good movie, than being a woke movie that just so happens to also be good. I 100%, not but, I 100% agree with that. Like, I couldn't agree more. They've been trying to appeal to an audience that they don't have. They're like, oh, the kids might like this stuff. Why, why don't we, we will just put it in there? Are you kidding me? Are you out of your mind? Without realizing that kids don't want that and also, most people that watch your stuff aren't kids, you know? There's Disney adults, too. Your main fan base is Disney adults at this point. As you can tell, there's like a main theme going through all of these. And now it's time for me to go to my main beef. And that's Disney themselves. Disney has been going through this phase of releasing live action after live action remakes of classics for their new audiences, which the thought process of that it's totally fine. It makes sense in theory. But then you have to realize that most of the people that are watching it hate it and they think it sucks. So you have to realize that you're gonna stop it, right? But they just don't. They just keep going and making more and more of them. It's not a good look. You're doing the exact opposite of what your fans want, which is the theme with everything here. Same thing goes for your stupid animation studio too. I would say that the last thing that I think I liked out of this animation studio was Moana. That wasn't that long ago, right? WRONG! 2016 was seven years ago! Don't get me wrong, they, they've they succeeded in some of their projects like Encanto and Frozen 2 and that's it. I know this sounds like a lot of complaining and like the I miss the old Disney talk like that you hear from Kanye fans, but I honestly really do. I miss the days that I went to go watch a Disney movie or a Pixar movie or a Star Wars movie or a Marvel movie, whatever, anything under the Disney umbrella, go to theater and being like, all right, this is a guaranteed banger. I know what I've come here for. I don't even care about the premise itself. The fact that it's Disney has sold me. I'm here, I'm ready for it. Now I'm not like that. Now I just roll my eyes whenever I see a new Disney project. I'm like, oh, here we go again. And just wait, uh, either just ignore it or wait for it to come out on streaming. Now, how do we fix this problem? That's the neat thing. You don't. I've got nothing. All right, I got nothing. Disney has been digging themselves in their own grave. I'm not sure if anyone can save them other than themselves. They just gotta figure it out eventually because they keep losing more and more and more money and they still refuse to change. The only reason they're, they're still afloat pretty much because they're theme parks, which is wild. It's also why they've been losing tons and tons of subscribers on Disney Plus. They just haven't realized it yet or they just don't care. I don't know but they need to figure it out fast though because Sony and DreamWorks are right there with them. They're catching up in the animation space. Who knows, maybe Illumination will step up more after their big success in the Mario movie. We just have to wait and see. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. And until next time, friends.